Hello and welcome to a video where I'm going to be discussing the tactics I use against bosses on Earth. We'll be doing one for every area. Now these are my own personal tactics and what I find works best. If you have any other ideas, do feel free to comment. But for the moment, I'm just going to be showing what I use. I will be playing most of this on hard because if I put it on Nightmare or Apocalypse, which is what it's intended to show towards. However, a 30 minute video is something no one particularly likes. Gorefist is up first. Now one thing that I do want to state from the off is this monster does not have a weak point and can stump a lot of people because of that as they spend a lot of the fight looking for a weak point. There isn't one. Utilising something along the lines of Voice of the Tempest where the overcharged proc allows you to avoid enemy armour as well as putting Razor Stone in there to get some nice bleed off on your charge attacks is very handy. To get some pretty decent damage consistently with it I've gone for the Akari set as well as using Chicago Typewriter just so that I can build up the buffs and mods that I need to use. Hunter's Mark as well as Swarm are very good for this. Swarm for overall area DPS and Hunter's Mark so I can see where those bloody exploding balls are coming from. Up next we have a pretty damn easy one. This is Shroud. There's a weird trick to this which I utilise. It's called Don't Go to the Ground. The floor is lava. However you want to envision it. Running along this walkway that I'm currently on from one side to the other offers me very, very easy and clear control over the entire fight. The only real problem that this boss actually poses to anyone is when it has Enchanter. This does become annoying. However, just running backwards and forwards over these walkways can help solve that as well. If any ads spawn, they're literally going to be in a very linear fashion, one by one in front of you, and you can just move through them. If need be, you can walk into this square platform where I currently am, but overall, it's not really too much of a drama. The only reason I'm going down here is because I've been forced down by the whale attack and then we simply just go back up when you are able to this gives you absolute control over the fight going down to the ground there's too many corridors and blind spots and you can easily become overwhelmed up next we have barbus this is quite a unique fight because it does mean you've got a little bit of gunplay to do being that you don't tend to have a very good opening with him going with something like osseous armor with the hunting rifle gives you good dps good burst as well as clear control over ads because they will constantly spawn in a variety you have heavies lights melee as well as ranged if you make your way around the right hand side past the bus you can make your way into this corner which is on the opposite side but they can only come at you from one direction be sure to use your shift while aiming to swap your shoulders if you're on pc i don't know what the button for console is i do apologize but from here you can literally just keep him at bay and constantly punishing remembering just to hide back and cover when he fires up close that shotgun he has particularly on nightmare and apocalypse will ruin you so when he gets too close i like to punish it with spitfire mod which is pretty damn handy it also does mean that if any of the mobs or ads like to rush you you can also set them on fire this does end up being quite a long drawn out fight because he uses quite tactical capabilities as well constantly searching for cover moving around and also relying on ads to push you out of your current cover or situation so that he can rush you with his shotgun another reason why i'm hiding in this little corner you can't really go anywhere so the ads are also pinned it's sort of putting yourself in a stalemate mangler one of my worst fights particularly on high levels just because there's so much going on and the overall speed of this boss as well as the first half he is also quite small and difficult to hit so to get through this i use the twisted set just to help with my health management typically find that even up to nightmare just taking the occasional blood war will help with the health regen and just generally keep me topped off as long as i don't take too much in the way of constant abuse i like to use something like a shotgun here repulsor is a pretty good one because if there is a particular enemy that you just can't be bothered to deal with right now you can just put them in stasis and deal with them later doesn't work on the boss at all which is probably a more preferred way to go and as well as when you are using Twisted Set, 
be sure to take something like World Breaker for your massive AoE hits just to regain a good chunk of health overall. There are ways to completely run in and just burst this boss down, but I've seen them work pretty damn 50-50. This is just my main way of doing at least a surefire run with Mangler. Once he grows to his full size, when you get him to half health, he is quite easier to deal with because he is a larger target, although at the same time he does do considerably more damage as well as has a bit more reach, so you do need to be wary of that overall. Rip Hide, the nightmare for new players and pretty damn easy for those that know. The trick with Rip Hide is the simple fact that every single one of him shares the exact same health bar. So the best way to actually damage him is by trying to hit all of him. Two best ways to do this are quite simply the Swarm mod, which does really good DPS anyway, and it does hit a large group of them as well as the Particle Accelerator. For this, I am using Labyrinth Set for extra damage on the mod for Particle Accelerator and Swarm, as well as Gunslinger Charm, Empowering Loop, just so that my reload and damage with the actual weapons themselves aren't that bad. I'm also using Gift of the Iskow, just so I can generate a tad more mod generation, just because the, I know, quite simply, the moment that I fire off at least two, gravity cores from the particle accelerator that this fight is over so it's just getting those two gravity cores up and running staying alive can be a bit of an issue this is literally just going to be a timing thing as you can see i do also get hit no one's perfect at this fight it can become a complete mess very quickly it just takes a bit of patience and a bit of practice especially on higher levels Overall, this is actually not too much of a bad fight. You just need to maintain damage. It's a weird boss where it does a lot of area, a lot of single target, as well as can focus down several players in, in co-op pretty damn quickly, as well as it can heal itself, which is a pain in the ass. Now it's the first of our two world bosses. The first, of course, being Ent. The first ult kill for this is simply destroy one of his legs. This is damage gated, so it will have a certain health bar that you need to do in order to break it. What that damage gate is changes per player, per difficulty, as well as the gear score of how, how many players you have per player, which is weird. It should approximately be about half its overall health, so if you do all of your damage to one of its legs it should break at approximately halfway however again this is approximate it can be slightly over and it can be slightly below a good trick for this boss is noting when he does this and just getting the timing down a little bit if you notice there is a slight glowy patch on his back that is the only available weak point to you and once you're able to hit that you can chew through this boss ever so quickly most of it is just avoiding the adds. He's pretty slow and cumbersome, doesn't really do too much in the way of actively attacking you. He just stamps on a few things and throws around. Getting the timings right can be a bit tricky, especially if you're colorblind like me and mess it up a lot. But generally speaking, he's not too hard to deal with as long as you've got some decent DPS and burst damage. For Singe, it's all about timing and range. This is the second world boss. His ult kill is destroying his tail, which you can do via either gunfire or melee hits. And his weak point is the glowing plate on his chest. Now for the range trick to this is you want to be within range of him actively targeting a single player, but when you see him do this arcing sweep, you need to be just out of range of that hitting you. When you can do that, he doesn't charge, he doesn't really actively attack, you'll only get minimal adds and he generally just focuses you down with fireballs which as long as you've got the timing for that and can just strafe left and right or roll through, he really is not a single problem at all. 
Most of him is going to be ammo consumption, so if you are fighting him for the first time, particularly on your first playthrough, just make sure you have some ammo crates. Anyway, that is my tips and tricks for Remnant of the Ashes Earth bosses. I do hope it's helped, maybe given you a few ideas to check out and try out. In the meantime, have fun, good luck, and don't die. <laughs> Bad luck.